healthy mindsets and these mind-altering egos um, and funny ways that we have about ourselves. But you cannot be a disciple of Christ and remain passive. You have to be active in his walk every single day of your life. You can't be mindless and be mind-numbed. You, you must remain active. If you don't remain active, your descendants will not remain active. You don't have a hunger and a thirst for the Most High. Forget about your children. They wouldn't even know what it means because they have followed your example. Hallelujah. But blessings and curses is just part of life regardless of this so-called pseudo-Christian lie of this grace thing. They have graced everything and they have done away with everything that the law no longer applies and graces up on everything, but yet and still we're the sickest nation on the face of planet Earth. We have witchcraft running rampant from one end of this um, land of the United States of America all the way to the other. We have diseases that is untold of. It's not even written in this book. Amen. The churches are dysfunctional. The homes are dysfunctional. Uh, the, 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 the rise of certain Satan is, is, is running rampant all over the place. Moral decline, spiritual bankruptcy, spiritual degradation. Uh, we, we are just impotent when it comes to real true service to the most high. We're lacking greatly. And then, of course, last but not least, um, this homosexual spirit and lesbian spirit that's running all over Across this land like there's no tomorrow. We know that we're in the end times because this is the end time spirit. Of course, that is also a curse that has come up on the people when you see this. So we are going to go over a few things to learn a little bit because, you know, I told you that after we had got finished um, with the Feast of the Most High, that we're going to be getting our way and working our way back into a, a, a deeper level of understanding when it comes to spiritual warfare, where it means we're going to go into places and, and go a little bit deeper into places and stuff because they're also, you know, you, that's just the way it is with human nature. You know, if you don't continue to practice something, then you'll end up neglecting. And when you neglect, you, you'll feel like, okay, well, I'm, I no longer need it and stuff, and you won't even know when you're under attack because if you don't keep your cutting edge, then cutting edge translate words spiritually to discernment. You, you're no longer to be able to discern what's good and what's evil. If something is happening with you or, or somebody else, a brother or sister, um, we, we'll go back into the old nature of pointing fingers and accusing each other rather than trying to find out what is the spiritual problem, the spiritual energy that's going on behind all this. Hallelujah. So we got to get back on point more than anything. Hallelujah. Now, Proverbs 26.2 says, as the bird by wandering, and as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Now, there is always a cause for a curse. It just doesn't come and land over in your, on, on your part of your um, homestead or you yourself without a cause. There's been a cause, whether you understand it or not. You know, I was able to look into the scriptures a little bit earlier and found out that, you know, we had Joshua... Um, pronounced a curse upon anyone who would try to build upon this land. Yeah. And 500 years later, somebody went and built on the land, and they end, both the sons end up dying. Yeah. You say, what, 500 years? Yeah, 500 years. 500 years later. So, you know, and, and you think about the commandments within itself. Let's go over here for a second. Let's see if, if the Most High means business. Now, today the commandments have become ten suggestions. Nevertheless, with the righteous, they are still what they have always been. They're the commandments that we read up on this parchment, but yet they're on the tables of our heart. That's the reason why they, they mean so much to us, because it's part of the covenant agreement. That whereas a lot of our people said amen, many of them had it in their heart to not do it at all. When we said amen, we really meant business with him. Hallelujah. So he said, they're going to start over in Exodus 20, verse 3. <clears throat> and look what he says right here. He says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Do you hear that? He's telling you not to have no other gods, and he's commanding us to not make what? 
any graven images. And you look at all, look at this land. I don't care what church you go into. They got images all over the place. If they don't have um, statues of dead saints and miniature figures, then they have these crosses up all over the place. If they don't have these crosses, then they have moons. They don't have moons, and they have these stars. They don't have stars. They got these dead monks. They got pictures of so-called pictures of Jesus, so-called pictures of, of Mary. And, and let's read the commandment, though, because I, I believe in this country that we're an educated people, but yet I believe we've been trained and not educated. When I'm using educated in this form, I mean that we have the ability to comprehend what we read. So that we're not going to... Uh, set up here and say that well, that's your interpretation or that's my interpretation. We're all going to read this thing and come to an understanding. Amen. And we're going to also go over here in the book and find out that whenever the people had a charge before they could even go into the promised land, they would have had to agree from the, for the blessings of it as well as the cursings and they verbally had to give an agreement with their mouth by saying amen. Did y'all hear that? And what are we dealing with more than anything in church? A mute spirit. You preach God's word, you teach God's word, the people are inactive. Very passive. I mean, they're just, they're just like in a, they're in a drone stage or something. And nobody wants to be active with the word. The scriptures teach you that knowledge of truth, though, doesn't it? Hallelujah. And the reason why you're knowledge of truth is to hope to be godly. So, could there be that there's some curse up on you, the reason why you can't acknowledge the truth? Because I guarantee you, if somebody says the truth and, and we know we're supposed to acknowledge, everyone will say, yes, I know I'm supposed to acknowledge, but what do we do? Hallelujah. But let's get back to this, and let's define this. Verse 4, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness, of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in water under the earth. And of course, what else is another one of those greatest abominations that's sitting up in churches? Fishes. Fishes. No wonder he covers the water. <laughs> and then you go over in Deuteronomy 4, 28, he tells you about wood and stone. And, but in direct opposition. And we're going to modernize everything. And we're going to tell God the way we see it. In direct opposition to his holy commandments and stuff, you'll see that people have gone about to establish their own religion. They're not in the belief that we're in. See, we're not a religion. We are a belief. And that belief is the only one true belief. And that's in the one true God. Hallelujah. But look what he says right here. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Y'all hear that? For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Now here it is. Visit the iniquity of the...